Okay. Welcome back. Hope you guys have had a good, uh, relaxing uh, weekend and uh, lessons yesterday went okay. Uh, time for another fun-filled day of creative coding. So we're looking at lesson 21, the penultimate uh, lesson of uh, this unit. Um, please, I hope you're not thinking, oh, well, we're almost done. I'm going to be finished with this course and everything's done and I don't have to worry about this class anymore. We still have some things that we're going to be doing after um, we're done with uh, games. We're going to be working on apps. So I um, need you to keep, keep working, stay with me. Uh, stay the course because we still got some really fun stuff to do. So today we're going through another another game. We um, finished up the Cake Defender last time, and hopefully you were able to to figure that out, get your game to working, get your game working, and get it uh, kind of customized the way that you wanted it. Um, today we're looking at this platform game from way way back in um, lesson one uh, that you you kind of tested out. So. Uh, in this multi-day lesson, the class uses the um, problem-solving process from Unit 1 to create a platform jumper game. After looking at a sample game, the class defines what their games will look like and uses a structured process to build them. Finally, the class reflects on how games should be improved, could be improved, and implements those changes. Um, so... Uh, on here, we've got, once again, a kind of a, a resource guide, so you can uh, click on that. It will uh, either download to your computer, or um, if you're on a, um, on a Chromebook and you don't have anything to download to, you, of course, can um, open it up as a Google Doc, which is right here, and use that um, for helping your, uh, your planning. Um, so, uh, of course, the one that I clicked on is a um, PDF, so... It's not going to really allow me to um, edit it much or very well. So I would need, of course, to get a um, MS Word to be able to edit it or the, the Google Doc here. So clicking on this will just get you the PDF. And um, that's for if you want to print it out and then fill it out by hand, uh, you can do that. So uh, this basically is just um, helping you to figure out these are the steps that you're going to go through in creating your own game in the next lesson. And that's what they've been trying to do through this Cake Defender and through this platform uh, game is to show you how to start from the ground up, how to take your idea. So describe your game, um, draw out what it's going to look like, what the characters are, how everything's going to uh, work out, and then start planning out the sprites that you need the variables that you need um, during the course of the game and um, surprise it oh and there and there's the functions and then uh, functions that uh, will be used uh, to implement the game so let's go ahead and look at how this kind of plays out here um, as you're going to be creating this uh, this game so you will need this later in some of these other activities so I would recommend that you download it uh, now and keep it in a place where you can come back to uh, so, game to the, the game on the left is an example of a platform jumper, plus run to play it. You can make the alien jump up with the arrow and move it to the left or the right with the arrow keys. You score by collecting scar stars, and if you um, score high enough, the background will change. You already know how to use all the blocks you need to make a game just like this one, and you'll be making your own platform jumper in this lesson. Um, so this is kind of the game here. Uh, we have the alien comes floating down. Uh, I can push up and he jumps um, and stays up for a little bit. I can move with my um, arrows uh, from side to side. The platforms will help him stay up. I think you have to get to like 20 in order to change the background uh, because it's not doing it at 10. Um, so... And I think I'm pretty sure the background changes to like a orange or a pink kind of color. So let me see if I can catch one of these. Nope, it's going too fast. Let's get this next one. 18, 20. Nope. You're going to have to go for a while uh, until you can get the, the background to change. But anyway, so that's the basic platform jumper. You can play with it a little bit more if you want to. Um, but we're moving, we're moving on because 
you guys watch all of these videos anyway, so. Uh, build a platform jumper for the next several levels. You'll be building a platform jumper game. Before you move on, you'll need to look at the project guide for this project. Wait for instructions from your teacher before clicking to the next level. So these are the instructions I'm giving you. Um, this is the uh, project guide. Um, I believe they might have this. Hold on, let me see. They might have it already filled out for this game. Um, here we go. Planning your platform game. This might this might have yeah okay. Um, I will put this particular document on Canvas for your convenience. So it has all of these things already planned out for you, um, so that you can see as you go through this thing. Let me um, let me let me download it. As a PDF I think that worked there we go okay so this the blank one is the one that I showed you that you guys have access to uh, this one apparently is just for me uh, but I will make it available to you so this is the blank one and then this is the one um, for the game that we just played kind of a sample of how this would be filled out so you write out the description you draw what the game's going to look like. You see the platforms coming down, the stars are coming down, the players coming down. Um, and then your sprites, you've got uh, platform one, platform two, star one, star two. You've got the player, which is the alien, um, kind of where they're supposed to be located, uh, how they're going to move. And then uh, variables, what you're keeping track of, and uh, functions. So... Background one, background two, show score, loop platforms, loop stars, control player. Um, so there you have it. There's all the planning that's kind of necessary for um, this particular lesson. So we are, well, let's go back to um, uh, activity, here we go, activity three. Uh, so as I said, I will have this available to you in Canvas as part of this assignment. You can check it out. So now we're going to start from scratch. Um, actually, not even some from scratch. They've set up the background for you. So if we run this, we've got the, um, the moon and we've got the kind of stars being randomized in the background already. So um, all of that's done for us already. And I think they even put in the animations... Um, our alien, our platform, and our star for us. Um, so it has a little animation that they have go back and forth with the little um, things around the, the alien. Uh, so there you go. First thing that you'll need to create for your game is the background. The sample game had two different backgrounds that were chosen according to the user's score. The first background has already been created for you. Look at the background one function in the code below to see how it works. In order for the background function to do something, you have to call it inside of the draw loop. Um, there is an empty function named background two. You will need to fill that function with new code to make a different background, then test the code by calling the function inside the draw loop. Um, so read the code for background one, fill the code um, Fill the background to function with new code for a second background. Test your background to function by calling it inside the draw loop. So if you'll see, um, here's my draw loop is right here uh, towards the beginning. So you got variables, you got sprites, you got the draw loop. Draw the background, which is background one, and then update the sprites, which is draw sprites. And that's all you have right now for the program. Uh, background one, if you look at it, um, right here we have the background which is the dark blue we have the uh, yellow which is going to be your um, your moon uh, and your random stars um, and then your dark blue and the ellipse is going to be the other part of the the moon so it, this is basically just two circles here we have a circle that's here and another circle that's here um, that creates our, our moon type shape 
So you've got to create a second background for um, when the score is going to increase. So if I change this right here to background two, uh, then you can see it's not going to um, show anything because I don't have anything drawn here in background two. So come up with some type of fun scene, uh, put some balloons in the background, uh, make it, I'm just going to make mine kind of just simple. We're going to say background. Uh, background, uh, we're going to make it orange because that's my favorite color. Okay, uh, so uh, except I didn't spell background right. There we go. Now let's try it. Boom. There we go. There's my second background. Um, I'd recommend that you make yours a little more interesting than mine. But for the purposes of this video, I'm already at 11 minutes, and uh, this is only the first part. But there you go. make a second background um, and call it, and make sure it's going to work um, for uh, lesson. Well, not lesson, but uh, puzzle puzzle four. So puzzle five, we'll start going over in in the next video. So hopefully, you're able to get the. Uh, planning sheet and able to, to figure that out and look at that and get started with uh, changing the background and knowing how to call it within the, uh, the draw loop.